Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the course, How to Use Zebra HC. This is video 12, and today we're talking about the FMO module or the Frequency Modulation Oscillator. So let's right-click Display Port, go to Init Preset, and right below this OSC1, let's click this empty cell and let's select the FMO1. So basically, we can do frequency modulation in Zebra, and there's a couple different versions of frequency modulation that we can do. So the first one by default is called FM by input. However, we can click this and we have a menu of a couple different things. We have this first one, FM by input, and then we have FM self plus RM input, filtered FM, FM self two plus. So we're gonna go through all these and kind of see what they do so you know which one is right for you. So the way to start here is to kind of think of this first mode here, FM by input. So this version needs something to get as input. So in this case, as we look at this diagram here, oscillator one is feeding into frequency modulation oscillator number one. So what we can do is let's go to oscillator number one right here and let's go to this tab. And on this preset here, let's select this and go to sign tree. So now we basically just have one sine wave. So if we disable the frequency modulation oscillator, we can see that we have a sine wave from this first oscillator. So now if we want to frequency modulate stuff, let's re-enable this, make sure it's FM by input, and then we can turn this FM knob. And we can get FM that way. And like I've done in a couple of videos before, a nice way to get some bass is if we have a single oscillator over here as a sine wave, we can drop this one down an octave, so negative 12, something like that, and then kind of tune this FM to taste. We can have some type of bass like that. Also, we can go into this editor for the first oscillator and kind of add a couple different harmonics to kind of really change our sound a little bit. So it's a cool way to, uh, to make a cool little bass with FM right there. So basically, a lot of these other knobs are pretty self-explanatory. We have the tuning here. Plus and minus 48. Then we have our width here, which is only really going to work if we're in stereo mode as opposed to mono. Then we have some detune. And then we have our vibrato here, which remember from the other videos that this is going to be tied to LFO1, so we can dial it in with LFO1 over here. Then we have a pan, pretty self explanatory. It's going to be panning the signal and then the volume. Now keep in mind, if this is routed this way, once we turn down this volume, we're not going to hear this oscillator number one anymore, but if we disable this, we're going to hear it again. So keep that in mind. And the knobs below are open for modulation from different sources. So if you want to modulate the volume or the panel, you can always select here and select a modulation modulation source and do it that way. Okay, so back to this different inputs here. So this first one here, FM by input, is basically taking an input from something above here and modulating it with it. So pretty self-explanatory there. So the next one is going to be FM self. So this is going to be self-modulation. So we can actually disable this first oscillator right here and just focus on this first one right over here. So if we have our FM down all the way, we have a sine wave. So basically, once we increase this knob here, take a listen. And it's very close to a saw wave. It has very interesting harmonics, especially here, and then kind of just how it just looks over here. And it looks really bright way up here. It's pretty interesting. And then keep in mind, once we kind of go past almost like 60-ish, it starts to get really weird and noisy. So I'm gonna turn this down over here on the main output here, and take a listen. We can go a little bit further, but I'll leave that to you to explore. So let's put this back to default here. And then the next item we have is going to be RM input, which is ring modulation, which is a variation of amplitude modulation. So for this, let's enable the oscillator number one again. And you can get a lot of interesting tones that way as well. And all the other knobs here as well work for the same thing. So really, once you kind of know these knobs here, which is pretty straightforward, we kind of just really have to learn these different modes here. Now, another cool one is called filtered FM. This is like the first one that we looked on here, the FM by input, but really the only difference is that the FM amount is gonna be full, so 100%, and there's gonna be a low pass filter on this FM knob. So take a listen. Wow. 
And keep in mind, if you like some kind of sound like this, what we can also always do is for our polywave here, we can maybe increase this to quad or something like that, maybe widen this out, and then also go to the stereo and widen that out as well. <laughs> Very, very interesting stuff here. So now the last one, FM Self 2. So this one's kind of interesting. So basically this is like the FM Self, which is the first one that we have here, but the input and the, the input is the output multiplied by itself. Kind of weird to wrap your head around. So it's kind of good to just kind of listen to and see what it's doing here. Let's put this down to single here and put the width back to center. And to really get a lot of bang out of your buck for this width here as well, maybe a little bit of detune can go a long way. So you know how we double click it here? We can kind of maybe tell that it's a little bit spread out, but as soon as we kind of deviate this detune, it really gives off that stereo vibe. And that's pretty much it. Generally, I kind of like staying with the FM by input. Obviously, if you want a different waveform to frequency modulate, that's the one you don't want to go with. FM Self 2 is pretty cool. And I kind of also like the filtered FM as well. The Self 2, I don't really use too much or the ring modulation, not too much as well, but it's really up to your workflow, kind of what you want to do. So that's pretty much how this module works in a nutshell. In the next video, we're going to be talking about this bottom bar down over here, the one through four and the extra parameters that come with the... Uh, with this module here. So thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something. We'll see you in the next video.